So greetings and welcome to another video. I'm Peter Updike and this is the Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman YouTube channel. I want to welcome all you, all of you to a, to another segment. We're going to talk about deer tracks here for just a minute. Um, got something real exciting to show you that that I that I made a few years back, and uh, it's helped me identify a buck track. And I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. But first, I want to invite you to like and comment and subscribe if this content is something that you enjoy seeing. All right, so I was down in the green swamp, I don't know, I suppose it was about 30 years ago, and I was just milling around on some private land I had permission to be on in an eight-point buck ran in front of my truck. He was in velvet. It was just before the archery season, and uh, he was a big-bodied deer, had a, had a, what you would call like a sway back body and just big features that would indicate to me that this was a mature buck and I watched that deer walk. Not too often you see a deer like that, especially in broad daylight. The deer walked right in front of my truck and walked up into the orange grove. Well, I pursued on foot. I got out of my truck. I wanted to get another look at him. I had a camera there. I didn't didn't have a, a, a cell phone or anything. I had a regular camera to take a picture of him. And before I knew it, he was up in the orange grove and out of sight. And uh, I could not, could not get a photograph of that deer as much as I wanted to, but I looked there on the ground and there was his track. So uh, I noticed that track and I thought it was awful large and I thought it was pretty dynamic and I wanted to find a way to somehow preserve it. I thought about maybe I could scoop it up with a shovel, but that'll never work. So I thought about it for a minute, and I went to the hardware store not too far from there, and I got myself a plastic bucket. Got myself a couple of bottles of water, a putty knife, and a box of hydraulic rock-tight cement, which is the sort of thing that you would put in a fence post or something you want to cement anchors in the concrete with. It dries real fast, and I took it out there to the orange grove, and I put some water in that bucket and that rock tie cement, and I mixed it all up to the consistency where it was heavy but would still pour, right? Kind of like a, like a soupy pour, because you don't want to damage the track when you pour the material into it. So that's what I did. I mixed up enough to do three or four tracks. I, I selected three or four of the best tracks that I could find there, and I poured that hydraulic cement into the track. And the thing about hydraulic cement, it's, it's quick dry. It takes 15 minutes to set up, and it's hard as a rock, right? So after the time was up, I pulled them things in and stuck them in the bucket, and I brought them on home. I got them here, and I hosed them all off and cleaned them up. And uh, lo and behold, there I had a deer track a big buck deer track in reverse okay so I went back to the hardware store and I got myself some grout some cement grout it has no gravel in it right I got some chicken wire and a piece of plywood I took that chicken wire and I laid it down on the plywood and then I mixed up that grout it was like mud right heavy thick as I could as I could get it without and still be able to work it, right? And I made a patty over that chicken wire. I was using the chicken wire as reinforcement, okay? Like uh, you would rebar in a concrete scenario. And I made a patty of concrete. And then I took that track and I jammed it, that track in reverse, with the rock tight, jammed it into the mix, pulled it out, and it left a perfect deer track. And I did it again. Boom. Stuck it in there. Now I have two tracks on one patty. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, that's what a buck track looks like. I have that here. I'm going to show it to you. Here it is. Check it out. Isn't that awesome? That's a pretty big deer track. That deer track is about the size of a pack. I hate to use this description, but... It's about the size of a pack of cigarettes in length and in width. If you take a pack of cigarettes, it's a pretty good size. Well, that's how big that track is. That is a perfect example of what a buck track looks like. Now, this has been beneficial to me because I've looked at this casting 
over and over and over again for 30 years, okay? And it has burned an image in my brain of what a big buck track should look like. Because of this experience doing this, I never look at a track the same. I feel like I've almost cheated the system somehow. Now when I'm walking in the woods and I see a deer track in soft sand, I can determine to a certain level of certainty if it's a mature buck, mature buck four and a half, five and a half years old or, or greater, okay? Features on the deer hoof get more dramatic with age. Same with people. And if you're looking at a young deer and a young a young hoof, hoof deer, I shot a, a buck that was five and a half years old, and his hooves were almost, it was in with good shawm, both his inside toe were almost worn down, and the other side was natural. He was clanking his feet together, I guess, I don't know. But this was a, this was a great idea, and, and uh, I wanted to pass that on to you. I got another one here I want to show you. Check this one out. I did the same thing but with black bear. Look at that. I was in the Ocala National Forest and I had carried my concoction up there with my truck. And I said, I'm gonna go find me a black bear. And I found one. This was on Forest Road uh, 99. And uh, this big old, now this is a big old black bear. He's, he's seven or eight inches wide at the pad and uh, nice long toes. I like it, it's cool. So let's talk about deer tracks for a minute. When I was a kid growing up, so much has changed in the way of hunting. We may not even pay attention to deer tracks anymore. We just want to set up our trail cameras and look and see. And I'm not bashing guys that use trail cameras. You use them and enjoy them. It's not for me, okay? But um, when I was a kid coming up, we would hike into Camp Lenoche. I was in the Boy Scouts. And we would hike in with our backpacks, working on our backpacking merit badge. And one day we came across some deer tracks in the road. And the scoutmaster there, Mr. Kaufman, his son was my buddy. And we were always together and having a good time. We were in the Boy Scouts, right? We saw those deer tracks. Mr. Kaufman gathered us around. He said, now, Peter, what's that deer track? No, he said, Peter, what's that track saying to you? And the only thing I could come up with was it was a deer track. I said, well, Mr. Kaufman, that's a deer track. That's what it says to me. And he says, you're exactly right. That's what that is. And if you knew what every track in the woods looked like and what critter it belonged to, that'd make you a pretty special person, wouldn't it? I said, wow, yeah, I guess it would. And then he turned to Mike and he said, now, Mike, what do you, what do you see in this track? And he said, well, it looks like to me the deer's going this way. Good. The deer's going that way. Sure enough. Deer's going that way. Okay, so let's investigate a little bit further. And there are some more tracks there. There were like 40 tracks that we were looking at right there in that soft clay of that road. And uh, the track that was next to it was smaller. And we finally came to the conclusion that it was a doe and a yearling had walked across the road. With well, all those tracks, we thought, well, there would be more deer than that. We thought it was a whole herd with all the tracks that were there. But then he pointed out to us, well, with every single step that a deer makes, he leaves four tracks. So if he walks across there and he makes 10 steps, he's left 40 tracks. And if there's two deer, well then they've left 80 tracks. There's something that you can think about when it comes about the science of scouting and the, the ability to read sign and to be a tracker and to understand the nature of things when it comes to deer tracks. And, if you go hunt in the Ocala National Forest, there are times, as when I go, that you can't go 10 feet without seeing a deer track. There are deer tracks of every shape and size and, 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 and blend that you can imagine. And I can, go to my, I can go to my stand and sit for four or five hours and it had rained the night before. And then I would see no deer tracks going to my stand. I'd get down out of my stand after seeing no deer walk back the same route that I came because I come down a trail and walk along the edge of my ladder stand and I'll see deer tracks that were not there. I make notes of every deer track that I see. I always like the guy that says got the deer, 
deer hoof on the end of a stick and he goes up to his buddy's truck, right? And he puts deer tracks in the sand all around. You've seen, heard stories and seen people have done that. Just as a practical joke. Yeah, it's funny. But it's not funny when it happens for real and it happens to you. I've sat for four hours. I didn't see a single deer. I'm coming back and there's deer tracks all in the trail where I had walked, right? And uh, I did not see a single deer. So that's that's the uh, the whole thing about deer tracks. Now, if you go down to the green swamp, you'll 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 notice that the the experience may contrast. That if you go down and you hunt in the swamp, you may see no deer tracks at all. And uh, yeah, if you want to find a buck, you'll need to find a rub because there's no. I tell you what, the the green swamp does have. It's got a lot of trails. You can go into the green swamp and you can look and see and. And, and experience what a trail looks like because they're obvious. They almost look like a, uh, a jigsaw puzzle going through all the grass and all of the, the stands of cypress and the cypress dome. You can see those trails coming in and out of those domes. Man, I don't know where all those deer are. There's something making all those trails. Well, it's got to be deer and hogs and turkeys and everything else. It's a cool place. But you, you can see the contrast that you can go to Ocala. You can see a lot of tracks everywhere you go. Sometimes you'll see running tracks, right? I knew a guy that used to go up there and he would drive up and down those clay roads looking for running tracks. His thought process was, if I can find a running track, I'll find a doe that's in heat with a buck chasing. I don't know if that's true or not, but he says I'll, he'll sit up somewhere nearby. He believes doing that helps put the odds more in his favor. If I can be in the area of where chasing or at the very least, running is happening. Because we've all done it. We've all driven down those roads, right? And seen running tracks. And look at there. There's a deer running track. What's that mean? Well, maybe he's chasing a doe. Maybe it happened last night. Maybe they're in that block of woods right there. But I'm going to go set up in that block of woods and see if I can kill him. Yeah. Why not? That's using sign to your benefit, putting the odds more in your favor. So pay attention to the deer tracks. I think what I'll probably do is I'm going to probably make some of these, and next time I have a book event, I'm going to have some of these to sell. They're cool to have. I like having it on my desk or over here by the fireplace just to look at them. People come in and look at them. They're neat. If you're a deer hunter, why wouldn't you have one of these? Love you guys. See you. Bye.